Welcome to the Industrial Talk Podcast with Scott McKenzie. Scott is a passionate industry professional dedicated to transferring cutting-edge, industry-focused innovations and trends while highlighting the men and women who keep the world moving. So put on your hard hat, grab your work boots, and let's go. All right, welcome to the Industrial Talk Podcast. My name is Scott McKenzie. So glad that you are here. You know this platform, this Industrial Talk platform is dedicated to you 100%. The industrial professionals, the companies that get it done, your innovators, and you're changing the world. That's what we're all about. That's what we like to highlight. And we're going to be having another great interview this time around with a gentleman by the name of Stephen Reeve. Don't put an S on the end of that. He's the general manager at uh, Arms Reliability. And you know what we're going to be talking about on this episode? Yeah, that's right. Asset management, baby, on this episode of the Industrial Talk Podcast. So let's get going. Yeah, can't have enough uh, asset management uh, conversation. It's going to be good. But before we really proceed forward, we've got a couple of points of business to just sort of highlight. Once again, you need to be in the podcasting game. Go to industrialtalk.com and uh, find a series that I created called uh, You Have to Be Podcasting. It's important for your sales, marketing, and branding. It's all out there. Everything that I know is on those podcasts. So, I mean, you can't go wrong. It's uh, they're easy, consumable, bite size of uh, six, seven, eight minutes max, maybe, of information that you need to know about podcasting. And then this podcast, this uh, Industrial Talk podcast, is brought to you by those wonderful people at Arms Reliability. Now, if you go out to armsreliability.com, you will not be disappointed with the, the level of detail on their website. They've got a lot of information out there, so they, they're, they know their stuff. They're, they represent a lot of large companies in uh, reliability strategy and what to do. You know, Arms Reliability, go out to them, uh, out to their website at armsreliability.com. Find out more. You will not be disappointed. So let's get going with this uh, uh, conversation. So, Stephen... Uh, we had a great conversation, uh, really. We're going we're to be talking about a little problem. The problems that we're dealing with specifically in biz- business is, is there's always this constant pressure, this constant pressure to reduce costs and increase performance, right? Everybody wants to reduce costs, increase performance, and, and do it for less. And uh, those are challenges. But it's not a challenge for uh, craftsmen within the uh, asset management space, and that's what Stephen is all about. He knows his stuff. It was a great conversation, and we're going to uh, solve that particular problem in this episode of the Industrial Talk podcast. So enjoy the conversation, and uh, here's Stephen. All right, Stephen, welcome to the Industrial Talk podcast. How are you doing? Thank you very much for joining and sharing your wisdom with our listeners. Yeah, I'm good, Scott. It's uh, good to catch up with you. Yeah. Good. Yeah, we were just having a great conversation offline, talking about F1, talking about food, talking about everything other than uh, we're going to be talking about reliability. So, uh, yeah, I love reliability, but man, I love F1. Give us a little background. Give the listeners a little background on where you come from and what you're all about. And then we're going to venture into a problem and then solutions. How does that sound? All sounds good. Yeah. So, um, yeah, a Brit, uh, having lived around and about, spent a good amount of years over in uh, over in Asia, which particularly enjoyed. But I've travelled to pretty much all continents. Started out in um, uh, utilities, uh, done some time in in media, uh, audience management, moved into oil and gas, upstream, downstream, um, you know, asset intensive industries, and then about three and a half years ago, um, jumped into arms reliability, which has been a fantastic move and a great journey with the technology and the people that, that uh, Arms has. Now, you, you said utilities. What type of utilities? Uh, power or water? It, or? Yeah, power. Well, uh, electricity, gas and water, but more around the data management side in the early days of moving away from, you know, the old solid state metering into, you know, more advanced right, um, right. commercial industrial energy management and those sorts of things. So, yeah, got involved in that pretty early on. And, and that's what took me into Asia with some um, uh, data management type initiatives in Singapore. And then, yeah, that was it. My, my Asian journey started and in getting into some, some sort of digitalization data management projects. So, uh, you know, you, you made the jump to arms. I mean, you, you, you've been there for what? I think your stat card says three plus years. Three and a bit yeah, years, three yeah. and a half years. Right. Uh, you, you left Baker Hughes. You jumped uh, to uh, arms. And and it and it's a reliability centric company, no doubt about it. How right. come? 
Um, yeah, so Baker Hughes, great company, but then had this opportunity, got introduced to Arms Reliability, who, you know, say, I'd had a number of years working primarily in the oil and gas industry uh, upstream, um, looked at Arms Reliability when, when we started talking, and I mean, they're in so many different industries, any industry that's out there that has assets that need looking at and, and uh, optimizing and increasing performance, then Arms are in it. They've got experience of projects all over the world in you name it, oil and gas, mining, pharmaceutical, manufacturing, uh, they're all over it. So that was really interesting to me to get involved in some other industries I've not previously been exposed to. Do you find uh, that the embracing of reliability principles, such as what is at uh, ARMS, is it, is it growing? Is it it's, is expanding? Are people beginning to embrace the value of reliability? They seem to be. Uh, I think um, people are on varying levels of maturity. They're on different parts of that journey. Everyone talks about reliability. Some people may have a different understanding of what reliability means yeah. and what it is. Um, and I guess what we're now doing is broadening away from the sort of um, reliability messaging that's been out there for a while now into the more asset management, asset strategy management. So not reliability as sort of a siloed activity, but into that broader space of asset management. That is a great point. That's an interesting point because that, that speaks to not from a sort of a projectized mindset, but more of a cultural ongoing right. asset focus. I like that a lot. Explain so, so we can venture into the problem. Give us a little problem statement of, of, where we sit today in industry and, and what are the challenges and then what are some of the solutions? Right. So, I mean, a lot of organizations are obviously cost focused, right? You've got to get the most. Every of, organization better be right. cost focused. Every, every, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah. Not most all, every single one of them. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> and, and sometimes they see activities such as maintenance reliability as a cost. And that cost is one that can be cut and reduced. Um, over over a period, right? Without really understanding the impact, um, you, so by actually cutting cost, you may be increasing cost because of the increased cost of managing downtime, um, increased costs of you know unforecastable performance of assets and, and operations. So, you know that's the kind of space we get into helping organisations understand if you do need to make a change. Where do you make that change without compromising on quality, on risk, on cost? On Isn't it amazing sure. that that is always the case? It's like, okay, I've got to manage my costs and things are changing and I got a new leader coming in and we're going to look at all of the, our financials. And it's, and it's like a laser beam focused on your reliability activities because it's such a, it's such a long tail strategy of going, you got to do it today because, you know, Five years from now, you will reap the benefits. And then when you reap the benefits, the financial benefits, five years from now, there's like, all right, we're here. Let's cut. It's like, <laughs> right. It's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. So I think you've got people who are not fully understanding the impacts of, um, you know, reorganizing maintenance and reliability functions. Um, you know, people, as you mentioned, right, people treat reliability as a project. Um, and, and as we talked in, in, in a, a earlier, reliability, there's no end date on it, right? It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a process, it should be ongoing. And that's where we talk to organizations who say, but hey, you know, we looked at our strategies, you know, two years ago, and we're now looking at them now, and then we'll look at them in two years time. Um, you know, th there's so much happens in that period that they need to be focusing on. The other thing we're seeing is that increasingly, companies that you don't meet many organizations that have just one single site right you've got organizations that have multiple sites and you've got pockets of excellence in different places and different parts of the organization that there's an inability to leverage that um, and, and data and digitalization is driving a huge part of that for us and that's how we can go in and really bring value to some of these organizations you you mentioned digitization so when you say of these uh, companies that are all sort of disconnected all under one of you know one corporate banner but they're still somewhat disconnected do you see that digitization is a way of being able to sort of consolidate that information and be able to leverage 
some of them? It is. There, you know, luckily there's a huge amount of data out there now. So people are really getting a good understanding. <laughs> it's a, fr- well, a freaking tsunami, data, man. Right? <laughs> so, I mean, we, we, you know, you touched on the F1 in the introduction. I mean, you imagine the amount of data that's coming back from an F1 car, but you imagine a, you know, facility like a, you know, refinery, an oil rig, uh, you know, manufacturing plant, a mine. I mean, the amount of data that's knocking around these days and people are investing in, you know, asset, asset health monitoring and, and, and you know, APM and all these other things. And there's, there's lots of systems and data out there. So people are now able to see, you know, we were promised this level of performance. You know, when we, even at a design stage, we designed this operation, this facility to deliver this amount of availability and then they're not getting it. Well, now there's a amount of data out there they can go back and look at to understand, well, why are we not achieving the, the levels of performance that we thought we would? And, and again, you know, when you're designing, you're not designing from scratch, hopefully. You, you, you know, you've got a, a design template, you know, that you've got similar assets and equipment across multiple sites. Well, how's it performing in site A versus site B? And you just compare the data to understand you know, how things should be performing and, and then, you know, treat the best one and hopefully have an easy way of deploying strategies and knowledge across that, uh, that enterprise. You, 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 all of that's great. And, and I'm, I'm a big fan, but you know, companies are trying to do more with less, right? How, how do you see that? Uh, do you see that the future is able to accommodate that mindset? Because it's always going to be doing more with less. So it's just like, it's like a constant battle. For companies to say, okay, reduce costs, do more with less. It, it, it's like a, it's a mantra. It, it is. And, and there's inefficiencies that are inherent in, in some organizations that when we go and talk to them, you know, you're realizing that, all right, you may have you know, some great strategies, for example, that um, you have a number of, let's say, compressors across a number of different sites and you find through a failure, you do an RCA, you get into the root cause analysis, understand that you've got to do something different with, you know, change an interval or something related to that asset. Well, they'll then spend a huge amount of time manually updating systems to go out there and, you know, apply those updates. So, you know, if you can find a way of um, automating that in some way through a technology or a process, you know, we have this asset strategy management process that would, that would enable and deliver that. So, um, you know, then you're, you know, you're, you're doing, more with less because of you're being smarter, you're making data-driven decisions, and then people can focus more on, um, you know, improving things and being proactive rather than being, you know, reactive, which everyone is. There's always a knee-jerk around, well, an unexpected failure, downtime, whatever it was that suddenly people are running towards and having to fix, right? It, it always have. I, 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 I like the drive to eliminate downtime. I do and be able to uh, proactively and schedule and do everything that is necessary based off of good data, good practices, good processes, all of that stuff. But there's always going to be that unfortunate situation. But wow. you can continue to compress and squeeze and squeeze and squeeze. How do you deal with uh, cultural changes? There's there's churn within any company, right? Does uh, your your process and how you lay out your process, is it sort of agnostic to changes and it just continues? Because what happens all the time, uh, Stephen, is, is like, here's an executive, big into what you're doing. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm supporting you 100%. And then that big, that big thinker then goes some other place and then somebody else comes in and it's not as, how do you, how do you maintain that continuity of, yeah, of look, it's, a, it's a great point. And, and that can be the biggest challenge, the people part, you know, in, in terms of industry 4.0 internet of things, you know, all of the smarts that are coming our way at the end of the day, there's somebody with a, with a tool standing in front of a bit of equipment that needs to do something. Um, I'm having an interesting conversation a while ago with, with a client in Africa and they were saying that, you know, they just, don't like waste right so when a a, a task says go and replace a belt or change something at a certain interval um, you know the maintenance guys will go and look at it and go well hey it's not broken so why that's a waste to take that thing off and put a new one on so they just don't do it Um, so they don't have the understanding of the broader reliability concepts and, and it gets down to like you say the cultural people aspect of you know, it's education. Why are we doing what we're doing in the same way these days? Everybody understands health and safety. We all own it. 
um, you know, there's got to be that drive towards, you know, reliability of how can we expand the ownership of that as well within an organization. So when these initiatives are happening, they can be, yeah, I mean, we, we undertake small projects, large projects. Um, yeah, and, and it's working with every level and layer in that organization to have people understand what we're doing, why we're doing it, you know, communicate, communicate, communicate. Um, and then hopefully that takes hold and, and there's a stickiness factor around, you know, what it is you're trying yeah, to achieve. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Um, this is a big elephant. Let's say if I'm an organization and I, and I realize, gosh, uh, my performance, my asset performance is, I, I feel that it's not performing as it should, but it's a big elephant. And, and uh, the way I would consume that elephant is one bite at a time. What is that one bite? If I'm a company that says I, I need to be able to start to deploy, you know, solutions, processes, reliability stuff. What, what's that one bite that you, you would focus in on? Well, it, it's the one that's giving them, you know, the biggest heartache at that point in time, right? So we will undertake, you know, what we call a gap analysis. So we'll sit down with someone and we're not just in front of a client to sell a product or a solution. We're there to solve a problem that they've got. Good. So we'll sit down with them and understand, you know, what is it you're trying to achieve? Where are you today? Where are you trying to get to? And let's let's have a pathway to get you to where you need to be. You know, everyone's got budgets. Everyone's got limitations around resources that are available, money that's available. So we'll look at the activity that's going to drive the sort of quickest and highest level of return and value for that client. And, and that can be you know, different for any organization. Sometimes there's absolutely low hanging fruit. I mean, I've talked to one client recently that he said it's not even low hanging, it's on the floor. I and mean, it's just you walk around and pick the stuff up. I'm um, stubbing my toe on it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So in other organizations, they're a little bit more mature and, you know, performance is relative. I think we, again, we, we talked on the, you know, the F1 analogy earlier of, of you know, how, how people and companies perform and what's acceptable to one is, um, you know, entirely unacceptable to another. So it's really understanding where a client is and we're never going to go in and offer a, you know, a $100,000 solution to a $5,000 problem. So it's really understanding what the pain points are for the organizations and, and yeah, where they're going to see some return that will justify additional investment and confidence in us as an organization or in the work that yeah. they're doing. And, and uh, once you get everybody sort of shaking their head in the right direction saying, yeah, yeah, you're right, and you have the right people in that room and you do that gap analysis, then you're able to sort of, like you said, prioritize that, whatever that list, let's say it's a list and you can focus on that asset, then that one and that one, and then be able to really take a big chunk of uh, your challenges off right. the board and, and be able to do it and, and really have that quantifiable financial operational right. benefit. Yeah. There may be an initial pilot around, you know, a particular, you know, asset suite that, that you'll focus on um, show the returns that can be achieved with that. And then usually by the time we've had a look at, you know, we've done those pilots and looked at certain asset types by going through that process, um, you're not starting the next, you know, chunk of work from scratch because right. we understand, you know, your, your, loca your, your, your functional location hierarchy. We understand the data right. you've got, how you use your systems, what people you've got. So every part of the journey becomes a little bit more efficient. And, and we're all about, you know, utilization of existing knowledge and data. Um, that we can apply to the next piece of work that we do. And that could be within the same organization or obviously as an organization where we're 30 plus years old and, and all the learnings and experience we have from over time, we're then taking into the next project, right? So it's a, uh, it's a journey. And, and I say some people are further along it, but you know, we're helping them. We're helping them get there. But that journey also includes technology too. And I mean, it, it, uh, how, how, how do you say, okay, I'm going to go through that gap analysis. Great listeners out there one gap analysis and evaluate the low hanging fruit to a certain extent. And then, um, then be able to, to affect or come up with a strategy going forward. But then that strategy also has to incorporate whatever their CMMS or whatever system that they have and be able to uh, deal with that. Do you get into any sort of data cleansing? I mean, that, that's a big deal too, as well. We do, we do. And there's people who use different systems for different things. So yeah. what, what we tend to find these days and, and the drive we have is use the technologies you've invested in for what they're designed to do. So don't go into your 
SAP system, your Maximo system, whatever that is, or go into your asset health monitoring system and try to manage strategy. You know, it's just not the place to do it. You know, each of these um, pieces of technology have a place in terms of why you spent the money on them and the return they'll deliver. Um, so, you know, you can invest heavily in a, um, a, a, a maintenance system that, you know, you, you'll throw a huge amount of money, you know, when people start to look at, you know, upgrades to their CMMS yeah. or switching out to a new one, that's a big investment. Oh. Um, if but if your strategies are wrong, all you're doing is, is, is executing, you know, executing fantastically, but the strategies that you're applying are entirely wrong. So, um, and, and equally you, you can have bad strategies, um, you know, that are executed really well. So there, there's different areas you've got to focus on. So we, we tend to say everything comes back to strategy. Get the strategy right first. Understand what yeah. you're doing, why you're doing something. Is a task linked back to, is that preventing the consequence of a failure? Is that linked back to a, a failure mode? You know, understanding how your assets perform. Get the strategy right. That then justifies, do you need to invest in an asset health monitoring system, for example? Is there any point in spending that money in, in monitoring certain asset types and equipment? Um, it justifies the activity you undertake um, and all of the, the, the Plus, things that people need to go and do when they get in front of that piece right. of equipment. Plus, the, the, the systems today are quite nimble. And, and once again, to your point, to reiterate your point, that if you don't have the, 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 the strategies, the processes laid out, then you, it's hard to configure the system to reflect those strategies and processes. So you got right. it, it always gets down to that. And the human element associated with that is that if everybody says, yes, that's the process, that's the strategy, and yeah, we're all on board, then it makes the whole technology side of what you're doing a little bit more um, consumable, a little bit more palatable. Because everybody's, you know, as well as I do, it, it's like, yeah, 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 we're, we, we've got our strategy, but our system forces us to do X, Y, Z. So right. it, it's like a disconnect. Right, right. Yeah, you know, it, it, no one comes to work to do a bad job. So, you know, there's always, I mean, when we do all of the, you know, the root cause analysis type work that we do, whether that be trainings or facilitations, and, and when we find out there's been issues, you know, there's always an underlying, um, you know, issue around why somebody did something they haven't done something intentionally, um, you know, that the process yeah. has forced people down a path. Um, people are only as good as the, you know, the knowledge they have at a given point in time and the, the, the tools and equipment and data and information they have. So, yeah, you know, there, there's, yeah, the people part is hugely important. And whenever we're out seeing people, you know, everybody's trying to do the right thing. Um, and you know, we're just trying to help them get there as well. I, I, I absolutely agree with you 100% on that. Okay, listeners out there, there are a couple of things that I want you to make sure that you walk away with. One, I, I think it's important for you to look at your your strategy, your asset management strategy, your processes, and uh, you know come up with a gap analysis on maybe some of those low hanging fruit, and then be able to deploy that strategy. I I'm also and correct me if I'm wrong, Stephen. Uh, I mean, it could be incrementalism in a sense. I mean, you don't have to eat this elephant all in one bite because it could be a, a, no. a, a it could be a long term thing. But at least you begin to incrementally improve your you know, your, your reliability Absolutely. and your focus. Yeah, it's a great point. And we have a, I mean, on our website, we have a, um, you can do a small survey questionnaire uh, in terms of understanding where you are with your asset maturity and your processes. You can go and, you know, take a few questions and, and it yeah. will give you a report and show where you are on the maturity scale and not one of those, you know, um, uh, destinations on on that uh, on that scale are bad. I mean, it's just you are where you are, and it will then give recommendations as well. How do you get to the next point? So, you know, you or I can we run a marathon? I mean, I, I certainly can't. I don't know whether you can, but you know, you, you uh, start with right. your, your couch to five k. You, you then increment a, a bit further. You know, you're not going to go straight into running a marathon from day one. So it, it's a journey, and you just have to you know take it off in bite sized chunks. Understand where you are today where you're trying to get to and, and yeah, just get to the next level in the time frame that's acceptable to you and the organization. Well, I hate to wrap this up, but that, that is a great closing statement. Now, listeners, you know, I'm going to have everything I possibly can to make sure that you can connect with uh, our friend, uh, Stephen Reeve. You got that. See, I didn't put that S in there. No S listeners. No, no S. S on the last of that. No, okay, no S. <laughs> and uh, I'd like to put that link to that questionnaire to be able to provide for uh, the listeners to say, okay, I'll go on out there. 
and there's no right or wrong answer. So it's not a test. It's just an evaluation. So, you know, Absolutely. belly up to the bar. Do it. Figure out where you're at. That is, cool. Be, be and, bold. And, be brave. All that good stuff. All right. and, and the link to the website, you know, that'll also give you that assessment. It gives yep. you tons of e-books. Of, there's a yeah. the articles. There's, uh, you know, Jay Saps, who's our CEO, has written a great book um, around asset strategy management leadership. So there's a ton of content on the website that's great for people to go and have a look at. It's all free. Just go and get, go and get hold of it. So I, uh, uh, with uh, Jason Apps, uh, I, I had a finger full of uh, Vegemite in front of him on another podcast. That was, that's, that's a rough product. <laughs> it's, got, it's got a lot of salt to it. <laughs> Are you active out on LinkedIn? I certainly am. Yep. I've, uh, I, I've got a profile out there. I'm actively sharing my own content and the arms content. So feel free to yeah, connect it's up out with there. me Let's and add my, uh, a link to my profile there somehow. All right, listen, uh, listeners, pen and paper. It's S-T-E-P-H-E-N dash R-E-E-V-E. And then a bunch of numbers. Just put in Stephen Reeve and then uh, put in arms reliability and you'll find him. And he's a handsome gent out there. Great face. Uh, <laughs> You're too kind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, listeners. That's Steve Reeb. Stephen Reeb. And uh, he's with Arms Reliability. Thank you very much for joining the Industrial Talk podcast, my friend. Excellent. Enjoyed it. Thanks very and much. And you listeners out there, hang tight. We're going to close it up on the other side. All of the links and comments and everything that you need to get a hold of Stephen will be on the other side too as well. Stay tuned. You're listening to the Industrial Talk Podcast Network. Hey, again, thank you very much for joining the Industrial Talk Podcast. That is Stephen Reeve. Don't put an S on the end of that. He's uh, very active out there on LinkedIn. Reach out. Find out more. Go to um, armsreliability.com. Find out more about that company as well. Uh, you, I mean, they're, they're, they're constantly pushing the envelope when it comes to asset management. So uh, Stephen is a great contact for you. And I guarantee you, if you mention my name, he'll say, oh, okay, let's connect. And uh, his stack card's uh, chock full of great information, so don't pass that up. We are all about learning and growing on the Industrial Talk podcast as well. So there it is. Stephen Reeves is the individual. And I want to just thank you once again. Go out to industrialtalk.com. All his information will be out there. And uh, as well as why you need a podcast, you got to do it. You got to figure it out. You got to bring it on into your marketing and sales and branding strategies for 2020 and beyond. Everything I know is out there on industrialtalk.com. Look for the little button that says, well, you need to be podcasting. Thank you again for joining. It's always an honor to be able to be with you guys. Uh, Be bold, be brave, dare greatly, change the world. That's what we're all about. Thank you very much. Be safe out there. And we're going to have another great interview coming your way just around the corner. So thank you.